guys, Lemmy here and I'm back with another video. This week's video is going to be special because JetPens once again sent me another, I guess, little mini haul of supplies. So we're going to try to make a picture with them and it's going to be interesting and fun. So I'm just going to go through and tell you what I received and we're going to do a little bit of experimenting and then I'll show you what I'm working on and we'll see what I can make. So first, we received, now both of these products are made by Sakura, so if you have Micron pens, it's the same company. I actually have this brand called Koi, it's what I use for my watercolors in general, so um, I've had them since high school, so that's very cool. These are coloring brush pens. Oops, I just bumped my camera. Oh well. I'm gonna open this really horribly. Um, what I'm opening right now is the colorless blender. Oh my god, I can't open it. It looked so nice like two seconds ago, and now I'm mauling it to death. I hope I don't break a nail. <laughs> All right. So these are two colorless um, blenders. So we're going to use these to blend our colors, and this is the actual colors that I did receive. I asked for a set of gray tones because I wanted to kind of make a grayscale picture. I thought that would be interesting. And these colorless blenders should help me make gradients and they should be able to kind of push out the color and, and get different, I want to say different colors, but they're not really colors but different lightnesses, if that, if that makes much sense. So hopefully these will help. Um, now these coloring brush pens are water-based. Let's open this. What I thought was cool is that it shows you the number of the colors on the back and which colors are there. And also this panda's really cute. Just saying, just putting that out there. So uh, this is what they look like. Let me see if I can kind of uh, get it closer to the camera so you can see. So here we go. I feel like Vanna White. <laughs> so this one is dark cool gray. So let me kind of read off the colors to you. We have dark cool gray, cool gray, warm, dark warm gray. Uh, warm gray, and then these might be light. Let's see. Yeah, light warm gray, and then it should be light cool gray. Yep, light cool cool gray. So we have three kind of, I guess, darknesses to work with, and we have cool and warm gray. So that's going to be interesting to see like what we do with that. So that's what I'm going to be coloring, and we're going to do it all in grayscale. And I was thinking of doing something special where I put a pop of color in there, because um, I always think those drawings look really cool when it's all grayscale and then there's like one color added. Um, so we're going to take a little piece of bristle board and I want to know what these markers do. So we're going to do a little experiment first before we actually get into the coloring. Okay, so this one is light warm gray. We're going to put the warm on the right. All right. Actually, let's see if I can make one side darker if I rub it on more. Cool. What about this one? This one is light cool gray. That's much lighter than the warm gray. Let's see, warm. Actually, these two look like they go together really well. Ah, this is gonna be interesting. I don't remember last time I did a grayscale picture. Okay, so this is cool. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. And let's see, dark cool gray. And then dark warm gray. It looks like that the it looks like the warm are actually darker like over here um, comparatively but these look different this one looks more like has red in it and this one is just cooler oh this is gonna be so much fun I love these colors 
And then out of sheer curiosity, I'm going to try the blender and see what happens. Just like the Copic nibs, if you get like dark stuff on the bottom of the blender, if you just rub it continually, it will clean itself off so that the tip is clean again. Interesting! So then actually there are a lot more slight variations of color that we can make with the blender. Ooh, it's gonna be fun. I wonder if I... <laughs> I'm, I'm, you're gonna probably like get into the video already, but I'm kind of curious. Let's see if we take, let's take two dark ones. So is this the dark one? Okay, so dark, cool gray. And I'm gonna wanna kinda rub it into the uh, dark, warm gray and see what happens. With the colorless blender. This is going to be interesting because I'm actually getting a sort of like watercolor vibe to it where like it seems to really be saturating the bristle board and like pushing stuff around. Like the top of the bristle board is actually coming off slightly like if I were to use a watercolor. Interesting. Okay, with that being said, we're going to see what I can make with this. <laughs> ah. All right, and I'm back. Um, I did end up switching up the picture that I was going to color, and that's because I did some experimenting on other paper types, because like I said, it was kind of like this watercolor sort of vibe, and the paper that I'm using is watercolor paper and it handles the markers much, much, much more nicely than the bristle board does. And I just thought it would be better to use a watercolor paper if that's the case. Because um, I really want to show what the markers can do and I don't want the paper to really um, negatively affect performance. So what I did was I took an old picture that I sketched out years ago and I kind of fixed it up a little bit and made it look nicer because I've gotten better since then. So I just kind of cleaned it up and then I inked it and um, yeah, that's the picture I'm using. It's a picture of my character Lemmy. Oh, so cute. And her kitty. Um, so... I want to keep with the idea of using a pop of color, so I chose green. And since there's a giant crayon in the picture, I decided to use green crayons. And um, what's really cool about crayon and watercolor is that um, if you put the crayon down first, the watercolor kind of goes around so that the color of the crayon really pops out and, and stands out. So if you were to put white crayon down and then put paint on top of it, you would still be able to see the white crayon from underneath. It would still be on top because the watercolor wouldn't stick to it. Um, so I put down the green first of the crayon and then I went into the coloring with the markers. Um, later on, I will use some koi paint I have, it's the same brand, so I used a little bit of the green uh, just to finish up the crayon and to do her eyes and put a little bit of green around the stars. So I used the green color very sparingly because I wanted to show off all the gray colors and I really like how the finished product looked and these are very easy to use. If you're someone who wants to 
get a watercolor effect in their picture, but they're kind of puzzled by how watercolors work and they want an easy fix for that, I suggest getting the markers because they're really easy to use and you don't actually need a brush. Um, if you just lay down two colors and use the colorless blender, you can kind of like smudge them into one another and it gives you a lot of control. There is no bleeding. Um, it's just very easy, very portable. So if you want watercolor effects and you want them easily, these are great. The colors are really pretty. Um, I liked how I was able to get, because you get cool and you get warm, I like that I could make the hair like a brownish color, which is accurate to my character's hair color. Um, but it still is all grayscale, so it looks really nice together. I like how all the colors, or the grays, go together. One thing that I will say is that you really should get the colorless blender. And that's because I couldn't get a paintbrush to do the same thing that the colorless blender can do. And what's really cool about the colorless blender is that it picks up some of the color that's on the paper and you can transfer that color to a different part of the paper and color down that color. So you'll see me at one point scribbling on a piece of scrap paper and then I'll use my colorless blender to kind of transfer the color onto the colorless blender and then bring that back to the main image and lay down that color on the actual picture. So that's a really cool feature. It's an interesting technique because I try to use a piece of plastic to put down the color from the pens on it and then transfer it that way and it wouldn't work. It would only get absorbed into the paper pretty much. So if you want to use like a palette sort of situation, you're going to have to use another piece of paper and then transfer the color that way. Um, another interesting thing is that I did try, like I said, to use the uh, paintbrush and I was able to use the watercolor paintbrush that I had. Um, but it would only be for washes of color. It wouldn't be to blend things and move things and you don't really get as much control, but it's only for laying down pretty much a wash of color. Nothing more than that, unfortunately. But it's kind of neat that different tools get different effects. So it gives you more of that control that you kind of want. Um, if you're if you're into that some te some people really like watercolors that are a washy and bleed and they get all over the place and um, but this gives you really really fine control which is pretty cool like I've never had such an easy time watercoloring ever ever's in my life um, so when you want to do the wash I don't think I mentioned this. If you want to do the wash, you should just do the same thing with the colorless blender where you smudge it on a piece of separate paper and then you kind of lift up from that. So there's no like plastic palettes or anything like that. You have to use another piece of paper to transfer. Like I said, these are really user friendly. So if you were to uh, do a picture, okay, first of all, for me, it would take maybe like, depending on how detailed I want it to be, it might take like maybe a few hours to do a watercolor picture with watercolors. But with these markers, it only took me 40 minutes to color the entire thing from start to finish. So these are really like easy to use <laughs> and you get to color really quickly. And they're actually a lot of fun. I really enjoy being able to transfer the color with the colorless blender. And I really enjoyed, like, even though I had six colors, I feel like I have a lot of depth in the character and she looks really good for like six colors. Like, and then there's the green, but that doesn't even count for the character because it's, the character's all in grayscale except for the eyes. So like with six colors, you can get really cool results. And like I said, all the colors go really well together. If you look on the website at Jet Pens, you can see that they sell different color sets. I'm actually looking at the website right now and they sell the pack that I have received of six gray 
Um, and then they also sell a pack of 12, which are colors. So they're bright, bright colors. Um, and I think if you were to get both packs with the gray and the color, then you would have a lot more options and you could get kind of the value and the depth from the grayscale uh, markers and then kind of get the colored ones and then that's how you would kind of color your pictures if that makes any sense to you guys but you would get like a lot more different options if you were to get both sets than just the six that i got but i think for six colors in one pack i am extremely happy with how well they go together and how like i don't know i just think it looks really cool <laughs> i'm just staring at it and i'm kind of oogling it so um if you want to see more Jet Pens videos in the future where they send me items and I try them out and I give you reviews of them so you can see new supplies and all that, please, please, please like, comment, favorite, view these videos. They really help me out. And um, if you are interested in purchasing your own set of these brush pens from Koi. I will leave links down below. If you click those links, they'll take you to the page where you can buy them or you can study up and read a little bit more about them. Uh, Jet Pens is really good about putting in details and like explaining and describing what they're selling. So it's always fun to check out those links. I hope you guys found this video helpful and maybe you're thinking about investing in some watercolors or some new supplies and hopefully maybe this kind of opened up your eyes to different possibilities especially if you're a beginner and you want something portable or something easy to use or you want to be able to color pictures quickly on the go or something like that this is really great no mess no hassle really you don't need any water you just need your pens and your you're good to go. <laughs> so I hope you guys liked the video and till next time, take care of yourself. I'll see you next week for another art video and a big thanks to Jet Pens. Thank you again for sending me some more art supplies. Um, it's really fun to do these and I really enjoy it. So thanks again and take care. Bye guys.